In this video, I'm going to give you a breakdown of exactly how much my budget home golf simulator room has cost me so far. We're going to go through everything from the launch monitor to the impact screen to the hitting mat, absolutely everything that you need to set up your own budget golf simulator. It's actually going to be quite beneficial for me as well as you guys because I don't actually know at this moment in time how much I've spent in total. So together we'll work it out and hopefully you guys can get a better idea of how much it will cost you to build your home golf simulator. Hello and welcome to my humble yet quite effective golf simulator room here in the garage of my house. Now, I just wanted to give you a brief overview as to where everything is situated. As you can probably see, this golf simulator room is not the biggest. Um, I'm actually here in the UK and I live in a new build property um, and the ceilings are not very tall. I mean, I'm a short ass, I'm only five foot six and I can nearly touch the top of the ceiling there, um, which unfortunately means that I can only swing a six iron at the most in here. So driver and long irons there out of the question, unfortunately, but it's still good because when the winter months come, like for coming up soon, um, I can still play a little bit of golf rather than playing out in the freezing cold. I can just come into the comfort of my own garage, my little man cave, and I'm still good for playing a game or two. Uh, over here we have the impact screen. Where I'm standing now is where my hitting mat is. I've got a TV up on the wall here, which I use as my PC monitor, uh, but I can also use it if I wanna watch uh, the golf or the football on TV whilst I'm playing. Um, I do also have a projector up there, uh, so I can project onto the impact screen as well if I want to. Over here we have just a small little bar area. So this is quite cool. I'll use this room as a little bit of a man cave uh, if I'm watching some sport, but obviously also to play golf. Now this bar area here is where I make most of my videos from on my YouTube channel. Um, and what's cool about it is the bar actually folds up as well against the wall. So it gives me more space to swing the golf clubs when I'm not drinking and I'm just playing some golf. Um, over here, obviously, we also have a fridge that is stocked full of lovely beer, uh, which is always great when we're playing golf, isn't it? And apart from that, um, that's it. I mean, I'm going to give you a much more in-depth tour of all the little bits of this golf simulator room and more importantly, how much everything cost me altogether. Um, so, yeah, rather than me just chunnering on, uh, let's get into it and I'll start talking a little bit more sense. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to need to buy for your golf simulator room is a launch monitor of some description. Now, the launch monitor of choice for me was a Skytrack and I decided to go for a Skytrack because it was one of the cheaper ones on the market at the time and it's also very reliable and very accurate. Now I bought my Skytrack as a refurbished model directly from the company themselves and it cost me £1,600. But on top of that, I bought the full metal jacket protective case for £150 and I also bought Skytrack's play and improve package which cost me £200. If you're interested in buying a Skytrack of your own then I've put a link in the description below this video. Once you've got a launch monitor, you're going to need to have something to hit the golf ball into. Now, whether that's a net or you buy an impact screen, that is up to you. I started off with an archery baffle net and that cost me 88 pounds. Now the archery baffle net is brilliant because it's super durable and it's really, really quiet when you're hitting the ball into it. Now, when I moved into this new house, I bought a second screen. I bought a proper golf impact screen. And I bought this from a company called Hybrid Me over here in the UK. I reached out to the owner, Philip Stewart, on email, and I asked him if he'd got any old screens that he was getting rid of. And he sold me this Type 2 impact screen for just £50. Now, this impact screen is awesome. It projects a superb quality image onto it. The only downside is it's pretty damn loud when you're hitting the golf ball into it. So now I have an archery screen and I have an impact screen, 
both up in the simulator room. And what I can do is if I need to be quiet whilst playing golf, then I can use the archery screen. And if I wanna have a better simulator experience, I can pull back the archery screen and I have the higher quality impact screen just there. Right, once you've got your archery net or your impact screen, you need to decide how you are going to hang that up. Now, I used to have a golf enclosure and I built that out of metal piping. And if you're interested in finding out how I did that and how much that cost me, then I'll put a link up here and also down in the description below. But since then, I have realized that you can do it much more cost effective and much safer as well. Um, I use wire rope and what I've done, I've connected this wire rope to either end of my narrow simulator room. Uh, and I've used some bungee cords, I've used some tarp clips, and I've used some carabiner hooks to hang both my impact screen and my archery screen. Now, this is amazing because I don't get any ricochets off wedge shots, they don't come bouncing back at me or anything like that. And like I said, it was much cheaper. I've spent about 30 pounds altogether on tarp clips, bungee cords, and carabiner clips. So what I'll do, I'll put a link to the wire rope and I'll put a link to the carabiner hooks and everything else. I bought it all off Amazon. So I'll put links to those in the description down below. Okay, the next essential thing that you're gonna to need to buy for your golf simulator room is something to hit the ball off. Now, I managed to get my hitting mat from my local golf club at the driving range down there. I was quite cheeky, I went down and I asked if they were getting rid of any old driving range mats, and thankfully they were. Now, it didn't cost me a lot of money. It cost me 12 cans of beer, basically. So altogether about 15 pounds I paid for this golf mat. Now, I don't expect you, everyone, to get as lucky as I got because these hitting mats can be super expensive and obviously the more money you spend, the better quality you're gonna get. But I cannot grumble with this hitting mat that I've got. It's absolutely fantastic. I can't tell you what make it is. I can't tell you how much it costs brand new, but just be cheeky. Go down to your local driving range, ask around. You never know, you might get lucky like I did. If you wanna play golf courses on your simulator, which most of you, I'm assuming, probably do, you're going to need to invest in some software. Now, I went for the Golf Club 2019, and that RRP's at 900 pounds. But because I live in the UK, and because of the fantastic currency exchange rate at the time of it when I bought it, I managed to pick TGC 2019 up for just 680 pounds. If you're interested in seeing how I've done that, then I'll put a link to the video in the description below. But to run the Golf Club 2019, you actually need a powerful gaming PC or laptop. Now, I didn't have one of these. So what I did, I did a bit of research and I ended up building my own gaming PC. I didn't know anything about how to build computers, but after a little bit of research and talking to some people who do, I felt a bit more confident and I went for it and I managed to build a pretty high powered gaming PC for just 500 pounds. So they're the essentials really for your golf simulator room. Now the rest of it that I'm gonna talk about in the, in the rest of this video is stuff that I've used to just spruce up the simulator room a little bit. I'm gonna start off with the side protection that I've used for my enclosure. Now these are just some long black curtains that I've bought off Amazon. I bought two pairs of these curtains for a total of 40 pounds. On the ceiling, I've put some acoustic wall tiles, again, that I bought from Amazon. I think I got about 20 or 24 tiles for 30 pounds. And all I've done, I've stuck these tiles onto the ceiling and I've covered them with an old black bed sheet. Now, it's a very makeshift way of building a simulator enclosure, but I think it looks great and it's better than spending thousands of pounds from these professional companies. The next thing is the flooring. Now I went and put some artificial grass down on my floor and I got this from a local artificial turf store. I went down to them and I asked if they had any offcuts that would fit the size of my room. Fortunately they did and this turf cost me 100 pounds. As you may have noticed, I have a putting mat in my golf simulator room. I actually got this bought for me as a Christmas present, but I do know that this putting mat costs 70 pounds on Amazon. 
I also have a bit of a luxury item. I have a golf simulator control box. Now, I fortunately didn't have to pay for this because I got it sent to me by the kind guys over at Necton Sports because they asked me to do a review video on it. Now, these control boxes cost $200, like either $150 or $200, depending on the model that you get. Now, this is something that I wouldn't have invested in personally because my keyboard is very close to my uh, simulator where I'm hitting from. One last thing that I forgot to mention is the TV that I use as my computer monitor. Uh, this TV is just a, an old second hand one. I made sure that it, it had HDMI connection and it's got 1080p. And I just managed to pick this up from somebody at work who was selling it. And yeah, it cost me 30 pounds. Uh, one thing that I have forgotten to mention is the projector. Now, I don't know a lot about projectors whatsoever, uh, but what I do know is I think I got a super good deal. It's a Hitachi projector and I went on eBay. I bought a pro projector that I thought was a pretty good deal for 30 pounds. Turns out it's an amazing projector, so I'm definitely thinking I've got lucky with that. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my bar and the decorations that I've put up in here. Um, obviously, decorate it however you want, but as you can probably tell, I'm a big Manchester United fan. Um, I've got a picture of the Gallagher brothers at the back there because I love Oasis. I've also got an optic at the back, a little drinks dispenser for some spirits. Um, I will show you the, the fold-up bar, okay, because Whilst I am playing golf, I don't have enough room to swing the golf club whilst the bar is down. So I only ever put this down when I'm chilling in here, watching the watching the sport, or when I'm making videos. Um, so yeah, I've got it on a little fold-up system like this. It hooks up there just like that, and then once that is away, then I've got plenty of room to swing my golf clubs. Right, I've just done the maths and I've included everything that I've mentioned in this video, um, apart from the bar area and the decorations. So everything that is essential or necessary to create a golf simulator room without all the fancy decorations. And the total has come to just over £3,600 which I think is a pretty good price for a full home golf simulator setup. Now, I hope this video has been useful for you in whatever way possible, whether it's from determining which items you need for a home golf simulator or how much everything costs or where just to buy it from. So if it has helped you out just a little bit, please click that like button below. And if you're interested in more golf simulator content, then don't forget to subscribe to the Handicap Golf YouTube channel. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again soon.